Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about detracking or streaming or setting in whichever country uh, you are and what you call it. I've been asked for my thoughts about detracking. So if you're interested in this topic, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about detracking or streaming or setting. So in the UK, the British system, they call it setting. And what really I think drives me crazy is when I hear these phrases of top set and bottom set. So you can imagine how students feel when we say to them and label them, you're in the bottom set, by the way. And around the world, it's called streaming or in the US, I know it's called tracking. So it means basically when we actually put students in groups based on their ability, uh, and in particular in mathematics, I don't know why, but in mathematics classrooms around the world, this seems to be a really common practice. Now, I have my opinions about streaming and tracking, which I'm going to share with you. And I'm going to start off, I think, by first of all, labels. Now, we know that giving students certain labels such as you're in the bottom set or you're gifted and talented and you're not is actually really concerning to me. I actually have a huge issue with the label gifted and talented. I know a lot of programs around the world have gifted and talented programs for a section of their students. And what kind of message does that actually send out to students who are not in that program or who are actually not, have not been selected to be gifted and talented? Does that mean that they are not gifted and talented? I think it's important that we actually appreciate all of our students are gifted and talented in their own way. We all have strengths. We all have talents. We, we just need to be put, I think, in an environment to allow us to be able to flourish and to be able to reach our potential. So my first point about tracking, streaming and setting is the problem with labeling our students and the emotional effect that that actually has on our students when we label them in a bottom set or when we label them in a top set or when they're gifted and talented and when they're not gifted and talented. Now, the second point that I wanna make is about mathematical maturity. I know I actually developed my mathematical thinking uh, quite late. So my mathematical maturity happened probably, I would say towards the end of grade 10 or grade, beginning of grade 11. So even though I had uh, done reasonably well up to grade 10 in mathematics, my teacher at the time recommended that I should not be taking the equivalent of further maths. And further maths at that time was a lot of first year university maths. It was the most rigorous maths. I went to school in Sydney, Australia. So at the time it was called four unit math and it was the highest level of maths that you could take at that time. And my teacher said to me, look, you know, your, your math ability is just not good enough enough. And fortunately, the school supported me in helping me to be able to take on that further maths course, the four unit course. And all of a sudden, in grade 11, all the conceptual ideas of mathematics started to fall into place. And so my mathematical maturity came a little bit later, perhaps than other people. But if the school had not allowed me to take four unit maths, I would not actually have gone on to do a degree in mathematics, I wouldn't be here trying to share my passion for mathematics and mathematics learning. And so I think it's really important that we try to keep the doors open for all of our students throughout their whole schooling, their secondary schooling, which includes middle and high school. The mathematical ideas and conceptual ideas only fell into place for me in grade 11. And so if we actually say to students in grade 11, you can't take a certain level of mathematics, that actually, I think, discounts a lot of people that like me, who actually actually developed a little bit later. I also want to share a story about a student that I had in the past. His name was Peter. And he actually was told that he couldn't take what was the equivalent of HL maths at the time. And HL maths in IB um, is a rigorous course. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's uh, a lot of its first year university uh, mathematics material, I would say. And, and the highest grade for any diploma 
course that you can get is a grade seven. And so when he entered my classroom in uh, grade 11 for HL maths, he was actually predicted a two and a three is considered a pass. And so we were very concerned for him. But we had a few meetings at the very beginning with Peter and his parents. And I said, you know, Peter, I actually do really believe uh, in you. I know that you can, with hard work and dedication, uh, experience success in this course. And he took that on as a challenge. This really motivated him, the words that are of encouragement that I gave him. And his dream was actually to be an aeronautical engineer. And um, over the two years, he worked really hard. We closely monitored his progress. And in the end, he came out with a grade four, which was, you know, a, a more than a pass. And he went on to study aeronautical engineering. And now he graduated a few years ago. And now he is working as an aeronautical engineer. So if we did not allow him to actually take that HL course at the time, we actually would have ruined his dreams of being an engineer and ruined his life, I think. So my point is, we need to make sure that the doors are always open for any pathway when it comes to mathematics learning at whatever level, whichever course. And if we start tracking students very young, say from the age of 11 or 12, then students will never have that opportunity to actually fulfill their potential. And the last point that I want to make is about the research. The research actually suggests that tracking has very negligible um, impact on the outcomes in terms of student achievement. So my question to you is, why would we continue to track if there is negligible impact on student achievement and that it actually closes doors and stops students from really fulfilling their potential at different stages of their mathematical maturity? You can hear that I'm probably pretty passionate about this topic, and I'd love to hear your opinions about this. I've written a blog post as well um, on my website about this with some research papers as well. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining me this week, and I hope to see you next time.